Hello, everyone. How's it going? Hope you all have your coffees ready for the weekly sip. Mm. Post your coffees in the chat, guys. Post all those coffees. Have I played Breath of the Wild? I have D3 bugged. I, in fact, have a giant playlist of my playthrough. Let me see if I can find it. How's it going, guys? What's up? Five dollars from Amori. Thank you very much, right off the bat. Have you and the rest of the Wehrmacht by Night crew considered putting your episodes on Amazon Prime Video? I've never even heard of that before. I guess it's possible, sure. Yeah, po post all those coffee emotes, guys. Do it. My latte. Thank you very much, dude. Okay. The chat room is about forty seconds behind. It's it's a bit it's a bit odd, but I guess that's how it is sometimes, you know. Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Damn. Okay, give me a moment here. I'll scroll back in the uh, playlist and I'll get it. Where is it? Oh, it was an old one. Yeah. Quiet, quiet YouTube. Okay. So yeah, D three, a D three bugged. Here it is, dude. That's the playlist. Hopefully you can see that. No more decaf for me, dude. No more. I gave it away. No more decaf for me. Sikachi, where you been? Welcome back, dude. Welcome back. Ooh, look at all those coffees and teas. That's some good shit. What do you call a sad cup of coffee? A despresso. A de oh, sorry, depresso. Argus VGA, where have you been? I'm seeing a lot of names that like I, I recognize that I haven't seen in a while. What's up, guys? A 40 second delay is the difference between life and death in a fighting game. It's like a half second delay, dude. Oh, dude. We got snow like three days ago. What the fuck? Like, why? God damn it. Around this time... Hold on, I gotta get up for a minute. Around this time of the year, we were, um... Like, last year? Around this time of the year, last year, we were not getting snow. We were getting, like, at least decent spring weather. The snow is mostly melted at this point, though. Oh, thanks for the 50, dude. Sh shit. Thank you very much, Badger. You made the right choice. Caffeine missed you. <laughs> oh, am I, am I addicted? I understand, Zen Chan. You know, do what you need to do. Ooh. Senior Dev Kit. Brawler64 is a good pad at $29.99 USD. Yeah, it was like $49.99 here. But I think, I think when I bought it, though, I got it on sale. That was a... N not uh, the, the price that I bought it at when I posted that video. Holy shit. Big Guido for a hundred. Got my G string ready for the tub. Any of you guys who are given a hundred bucks, DM me on Discord, man. I'll set you up with the rewards. Thank you very much, dude. Holy shit. Uh, how's it going, guys? What's up? What's What's going on? How's everyone's week been? Mine's been, like, not bad, you know? Let me do a few things here real quick. Unlocking when I keep forgetting. I wanted to do it like three weeks ago. I just haven't. Oh shit! I just haven't had time. I got. You know what? Okay. Here, I'll I'll get right into it. Okay. So, oh, two dollars from Dylan. Thank you very much. God is punishing your foolish prime minister. Yeah, maybe. So, how do we, how do I support the show? $5 club entry is $5 from a recurring source. That's Subscribestar, Patreon, the YouTube memberships, or a, or a sub on my Twitch channel on Game Boomers. Um, 
It has to be a recurring source because entry into the five dollar club is managed by bots in Discord. That's a um, it's a Discord channel. So basically, if you connect one of your accounts through any of those sources with your Discord account, and you're in my Discord, you'll get the rank and you'll automatically get put into the five dollar club. If you donate one hundred dollars to my to my um, my PayPal, which is right there, paypalme otaku, I will give you a five dollar club membership for life. So if you plan to be around my community for more than two years, that's probably the better deal. That is probably the better deal. Um, let me just turn off my headphones for a minute. Let me, I'm using wireless. Tonight on Game Boomers, I'll be streaming. I stream usually five or six nights a week on my Twitch channel. I'll post in the chat room right now. There it is. I'm playing Jedi Fallen Order at 7 p.m. EST. That is in about eight hours. So drop by tonight. If you can't get enough Devo for some insane reason, you can uh, you can drop by tonight. And also, even if you don't, um, even if you don't want to watch game streams, like it's just not your thing, um, you can still support the channel financially through there. Like if you have no money but you have Amazon account, you have you have an Amazon Prime account, you get one free Twitch sub. So, so you, you can, in fact, still give me five bucks through that method and still get into the five dollar club. I want to make it. I want to make sure um, that you all realize that it's not mandatory. I'm, I'm not asking you to be simps. I want you to take care of your own bills first. You know, this is a hard time right now. Um, it is a situation where people's people's wallets might be a bit empty. People, people might be stretching a bit thin because of uh, what's going on with the lockdown, this ridiculous lockdown at this point. So take care of yourselves first. But if you feel like my content is worth supporting, there are a variety of avenues through which, through which you can do so. Um, so yes. There you are. Thank you. Let's see. Red coffee. Red coffee. Oh, $5. Keep up the good work with the awesome videos. Thank you very much, dude. I'm actually going to be recording. I'm actually going to be recording one right after this sip is done. I have a few ideas that I want to get on. Um, Goiden for $5. Love your channel, SFL. Keep up the quality content. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> it's five dollars. It's not that much money. Give me all of your money. God, I fucking hate her. Moth flies out of the wallet. <laughs> hey, X86. What's up, dude? Okay, so let's come into things, all right? Let me... This is why I don't show up for streams. No, Argus. It's funny you can you can see uh, you can see Dave lose at, at Jedi. It's okay because tomorrow tomorrow night we're playing near Automata on the stream. So if you don't like Jedi Fallen Order, come by tomorrow night for near. I'm opening up the Minecraft server just for a moment here. Is it even up? Yeah, it's up. Okay. So there is. Here, I'll bring us in. There we go. Okay, so there is oh Ben Z, thanks for the membership, dude. This is the the map of the city in Minecraft. And we are in fact, see, city map, we're right there. This is the whole map. People have really filled this city out. Um this server, by the way, is what your donations help fund. And the uh, the IP for the server is in the is in the description of the streams. So if you want to uh, if you want to play on it, you can do so. However, the server has been pretty consistently uh, shit. <laughs> like we didn't go with a good host. I, I got recommended by one of my mods. I don't blame him. He didn't know, but I got recommended by one of my mods for the server. Um, oh, hey, don't just fire arrows at me. I'm leaving. <laughs> okay, I got recommended by uh, one of my mods for this. Um, for this server and for, for, for this host, the host ended up being not great, but like everyone else has made this into an amazing place to, to, to play on. Like there's some, there's, there's some incredible builds going on here. Like it's, it's quite nice. Um, dude, there's so much cool shit. You guys are awesome. Okay. However, um, the host is kind of shitty and that's why I think a lot of you who, who initially joined up, you probably eventually left because the host was just bad. And I get it, right? Like, I understand. Um, you're like, oh, you know, it's, it's kind of laggy. It's unstable. I don't really want to play on this. 
You know, I've I've heard you. Okay, I get it. I agree. Right. I'm not I'm not simping for these guys. Um. So our time is up on July first. My paid time. I, I bought six months. Um. So the time is up on July first. And what I'll be doing is I'll be using some of the YouTube monies that you guys have so graciously given me um, to basically build a server in my house and run and run this entire thing off there. I've looked up exactly what I need to to uh, to do it. I know what kind of hardware is, is optimized for Minecraft. So that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll build a server. Uh... I will, I will build a server. I'll get a better internet connection because my internet connection is kind of shit right now. I'll spring for the hardware and I'll spring for a better internet connection and I will run the server out of my house. So you guys will actually have a much better Minecraft experience than the one that you currently have because this one isn't great and um, you left because Scrump shit it up. Uh, Scrump did some things that I, um, that I disagree with. And I will be rolling some of those back once I have time. But the first thing I want to do is handle this kind of th this this server migration. So it'll happen by July first. Um, and I am in fact going to probably set up a situation where like outside the walls will be pure, will be um, will be pure survival again because pe people are wanting everything to be like protected out there, and I, it, it's getting to be too much. I'll make it pure survival out there again, and then what I'll do is uh, like uh, uh, beyond this wall this should this should be a survival area people have really made like a little farm out here cool but yeah everything outside the walls i want to be a survival area i'm gonna i'm gonna reinforce that again and then what i'll probably do is i will um make a separate map if people just want like a creative map where they can build cool shit and it looks neat i'll, I'll make a creative map where everyone has creative but the main world will be plots inside of town survival outside of town and that'll be that and also you won't be able to like bring um inventories between them because i don't want people cheating but basically that's how i'll set it up i'll set up multiple maps and stuff and actually i do have some plans once i have the server like properly hosted at at my place i'm gonna start doing build challenges so this this cathedral will in fact be a portal hub there will be uh there will be portals in here that will lead to all the various maps so for example i wouldn't mind like um doing builds where I stream them and stream what, what you guys uh, have, uh, like, like doing, like giving the community a challenge saying, okay, you have like a month, build the coolest build in this style that you can. And then I'll, I'll come back in a month and I'll stream it. That's basically the plan. But in any case, um, yes, I'm, I'm sorry that the, uh, the launch of the server was, you know, hit and miss because of the, the bad host. I will in fact rectify it. Um, soon, soon dot tm. But thanks very much, guys, for um. Thanks very much for uh, supporting me. You know, for making all this happen, for for being a part of this. Like everyone, be, each one of these buildings is someone else's plot. Like you guys are all building stuff, and there's oh look, there's a Nazi flag. It's on fire. But you guys are all building stuff, and it's all really cool. So like, thanks, man. That's awesome. Those of you who um who tried out the server and because of the lag or whatever said, you know, it's not for you. Come back in a bit, okay? I will have it all sorted out. <sighs> Let's see uh, the super chats. I think I, I, I might have missed some. Let me scroll up here. Okay. Uh, Let's come into things, Will, if you insist. Thanks, Dylan. Thanks for the $2. Uh. Ruck ruckus for 10. Just passing the buck alone to you for good graces and a tip for your workout. If you do crunches, breathe out and concave your stomach as much as possible before you do your set. Way more effective. Thanks very much, Ruck. I will do so. Yiz for two bucks. I'm going out with my mom today, sending shekels. Oh, th thank you very much, Yiz. Thank you. Um, ben Z for five. To add to that guy, planks are also good for core workouts if you're trying to build core strength. Uh, thank you very much, dude. That's incredible. Um, I, uh, I do in fact do planks, but I can't do crunches because my gut's too big, but I can do, I, I can do planks. Kong feed 81. Check out the Western highway. I'm not going to be doing a, a full server tour today, but thank you. Um, King Canuck for five. Here's some shill dollars for the map and spawn as well as 
Nosila and I being the ones to go to go get tagged on map. Morning, Devo, my dude. Thanks very much, Canuck. Thank you. Th th thanks for working on the server. I will discuss things with you after. Um, 25 for the ender. Thank you, but you didn't say anything. So I guess just thanks for the money. <sighs> All right. Let's get out of here. Oh, I probably shouldn't be showing off any of that. <laughs> was there anything bad on there? No, okay. It was just how, how fucking disorganized everything is. That's okay. Oh yeah, it's it's Mother's Day, isn't it? And people were maybe you guys should um maybe you guys should uh, all remember to to uh, say Happy Mother's Day to your mother. Call your mom's, yeah. It's like a, I I haven't even called my mom yet. Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna give her a Facebook message. Hold on. Hey Z3 Carlos, do I play fighting games? I do some of them. Clip too late, Dev. Oh no. Oh no, you've seen my messy desktop with nothing really on it. Uh... Yeah, that desktop. Oops. Okay, guys. Here. The next super chat. The next super chat is what I will send to my mom for Mother's Day. Go. You have any spare Trump bucks? Give it to Devs Fund to resist Trudeau. Uh, single player car for five dollars. Hey, hey, car! I'll just say, hey, gotta sleep for my own stream. Big workload today for me and the fam. Tell your mothers you love them, kids. All right. I'm I'm waiting for a super chat that has something ridiculous I can send to my mum. I know that I know that was sent before. Same with yours, he is because because of the forty second uh, thingy. My mum still ain't ready. It's got another fifteen minutes. Welcome back. But yeah, you guys sent it before the forty second delay, so I'll just wait for the for the next the next thing, and I'll send it. <laughs> Constantine is banging King Shark. What? Wait, your dead grandmother got Trump bucks, but you didn't? Well, just take her her Trump bucks. She doesn't need them. <laughs> Naomi is pre Naomi is pregnant. Pregnant. <laughs> That's what I should send. <laughs> People are writing ridiculous crap now. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Nobody wants... To, yeah, nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to, like, ruin my relationship with my mom. That's okay, though. It's okay. <laughs> Revenant for $5. I've got my hand down my pants thinking of you. Happy Mother's Day. And Silver Grove for $2. Naomi is pregnant. Oh, God. Do I have to send that? <laughs> okay. God damn it. Send your mom flowers and tell her I said hi. <laughs> My name is Devin. I pronounce Samiz wrong. <laughs> hi, mom. Google dancing Israelis. Don't hand me a, bla a black check. It's blank check. All right.
God damn it. God damn it. Okay. Canuck old re is a drinking man's fetish. Yeah. Mad evil genius for two. Tell my mom we have the cat for dinner or beef. Two dollars from John. Mom, I can't access your OnlyFans anymore with WTF. <laughs> Ruck for five dollars. Thank you for not skipping town during my teenage years. <laughs> Jesus Christ, guys. <laughs> my fucking God. Okay, so... Let's actually begin a few things. So I'm going to post in the chat two checks out of my funding for schoolgirl outfits. Thanks, Vulture K. Schoolgirl outfits. Send pics. $2 from, or $20 from Patty. Thank you. Long time watcher of your content, Dev. You do a good job, and it's really cool that you're getting fit. I mean, kind of. If you have the space, you should try doing kettlebell workouts. Look up uh, kettlebell routines. I have some, um, some, some uh, dumbbells that I've been using. I don't have any kettlebells. But yes, I've been I have been swinging them around for sure. Recommend that your mom watch Boku no Pico. Zirin, dude, we actually did a, a, a review of Boku no Pico back in the day. Okay, so. Let me continue on here. I want to show you a few things, okay? This is my dev kit channel. It has 500 subscribers. This is the video that I'm looking at currently. Can you guys see that in the chat? Can you guys see that video? I've been putting a lot of the old anime reviews, at least the ones that YouTube will accept, on the dev kit. The uh, The entirety of all the old anime reviews are on BitChute. Every old one is up on BitChute. Um, $5 from Ben Z. Just throwing it out there. Hands behind your back. Flutter kicks are good for core too. Thanks very much, dude. Um, but basically what I've been doing on the dev kit, if I can just pull it up here is I'm using this as my catch all channel for a bunch of things. So for example, if, if, I, if I go to videos here, I know this channel has been dormant for a while. I'm going to change the header. It's kind of ugly. The channel has been dormant for a while, but I've, uh, but I've, I, I'm reviving it. Like here's all the old anime reviews from like a year ago. I've been putting them up. I've been uploading them. There's like old vlogs and like other types of videos that I used to make, you know? Um, there's a bunch of old stuff. Like all the stuff that was on this channel in 2009 is here. Um, you can even see like young Dave in, in the anime reviews. You can see young Dave. We, we did, we, we, Dave and I recorded commentaries of some of the old reviews. If you want to see like the making of there's commentary tracks. Um, for some reason, um, because I ran out of time to edit and I didn't have any editors, I tried doing the best of series. So like for our streams, I would make best of whatever, whatever game it was. This one was Donkey Kong Country. I only made one. I didn't have time to make any others, but maybe I will someday. Some people can't watch a full stream or a full playthrough, but like a best of video might be okay. Might be okay to watch. Also, these are like Dom melting cookies because she's insane. There's some videos of her doing that. I don't know why those are there. But, but, um... I decided to start doing tech videos as well. This is the dev kit's basically going to be my catch all channel for stuff that's not political and not like the political stuff goes in SFO, obviously. The game playthroughs are game boomers. Okay. Anything else that I want to do, I'm, I'm going to do on this channel on dev kit. Um, so please, uh, happy Mother's Day. Yes. Thanks for the $2. Have, have, have fun. 10 years ago, you're so full of life. Maybe. But anyway, um, this is a channel that I'm going to upload to, not daily. Just whenever I have something to put on there, it will not be a consistently uploaded to channel. But for example, yesterday I put up um, this video right here. Unboxing Retro Fighters Brawler 64 um, controller, which is just like a replacement controller for the Super Nintendo. I have a bunch of tech that I think is worth looking at. I have like some computer assembly builds. Uh, some some computer assembly videos that I've, I've recorded, but then I lost them. But then I found them again. So maybe I can put those in. I have, in fact, meddled with Video Homebrew um, FF1, 0x FF1. I have done that. I've actually recorded a couple of videos on some weird, obscure, some weird, obscure things that I've done. So basically, strange stuff that I think might be interesting 
will probably be on this channel. And because I now qualify for um, an Amazon affiliate link, anytime I do a, a review of a piece of hardware and you want it, you can actually click this. You can click this to go to, I think this, if you, if you if you click this thing, it should take you to Amazon. Yeah, see? And you can buy this and I'll actually get 10%. I'll get 10% of what you pay from Amazon because I'm referring you. So basically I'm going to be um, putting up whatever whatever tech or, or cool things that I have. I'll put up videos uh, irregularly. I'll occasionally cross promote with SFO. It's not going to be a serious channel the way that SFO is, but it also is a way to uh, support the channel as well if you want any of this stuff, you know? That's the way to do it. So uh, please consider, please consider checking it out. I will, of course, post the links to the videos as I make them in the Discord channel. I have like two alert channels, videos and streams. You can, you can mute, you can just write, if you don't want to hear them, you can just right click on, you can right click on them and mute them. But I do at everyone in those. So that you can see when a video comes out or when a stream starts. So I will I will be adding for these videos as well as SFO videos. Yes, thanks for becoming a member. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, so yes, there we are. Just, just out of curiosity. Yeah, you got, I got thirteen more subs. Thanks, guys. Yeah, four dollars per controller sold, but I mean it adds up, right? Because if I review like a shit ton of things, I could probably like, like I did a I did this video how to disassemble a hard drive using my iFixit kit, just how how you pull apart these um these hard drives. I could probably put up the models that I used um in in the description and be like, hey, you want to buy these hard drives? Here they are. Um. Anyway, that is I think all the announcements I have to make. I think anyway. Um, is it? Probably. Oh no, there's one more. There's one more. Right. A friend of mine is writing this book. Spirits and Songs, Tavern Heroes Guidebook. A tavern and entertainment themed RPG book. So they're 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 doing um an Indiegogo. And they're basically writing and drawing a um a tabletop book. And they wanted me to uh, look it over, and I thought it was actually a worthwhile project. So I'll post that in the chat as well, if you guys want to take a look at it. Thanks, Linus Tech Tips. Now stop, dro start dropping expensive hardware. Naomi already does that, dude. Okay, you know what? I still have a video, Dragon Fat. You're, you're gonna you're, the videos. The video is gonna go up. I I refound the video. I have the video of Naomi bending the pins on the new computer on the CPU of the new computer. I have that video. All right. I'm putting it out. But anyway, if you want to uh, check out Spirits and Songs, Tavern Heroes, it actually looks uh, quite interesting. So I posted the uh, the link to it in there. It might be um, it might be worth looking into. But I like the art. And the person that I've spoken to about it seems reliable. Um, the actual game itself seems quite interesting. So, yeah. This... this uh, this is like a, I think it's like a D&D &D expansion book. So, cool. A friend of mine is uh, is making it, so I guess check it out. Uh, the first thing I like to talk about. Yes, Naomi Bent. She, she We got like an AMD Ryzen 9 3950X, I think. I forget what it was called. Uh, but she bent the pins on it. Like I was like, Naomi's gonna build your first. Naomi's building your first computer. Just bends the fuck out of the pins, and I'm just like, no. It's like it's like a two thousand dollars CPU or something. Like it was like a thousand dollars CPU. Anyway, um, let's talk about the murder hornets because everyone was talking about murder hornets. Okay, now these are news articles from Canada, from Canada only. Um, experts are cautious but not panicked about murder hornets in Alberta. Giant hornets, giant hornets are not coming to Manitoba. New Brunswickers shouldn't worry about murder hornets. So all of these locations are provinces in Canada. And basically it's too cold for those, uh, for those murder hornets to survive up here. So we're fine. However, 
the thing about these uh, these murder hornets is that they're actually not nearly as bad as um, everyone says they are. Everyone's like, oh, 2020, you're the lockdown coronavirus, now it's murder hornets, oh no! And it's like, listen, um, first of all, Japanese honeybees, and now American honeybees can't do this, but Japanese honeybees can actually fight off murder hornets. They have like a different kind of, I guess, I don't know, I don't know what they, what they, they can. Like, like we, we all saw the dramatic image of, or like video of the murder hornets swarming in, just chopping a honeybee in half and then flying away and just being like, hey. um, they, for some reason, Japanese honeybees don't, they, they, they're not susceptible to murder hornets in the same way. I don't know why. I don't know the biology of it. Um, however, I don't believe that this is going to be a big deal. Everyone's like, dude, the bees are already fucked. It's like, we're, we've already been fucking with bees. You know, we've already been like spraying pesticides and doing other things, and you know the bee, the bee, Paul. You know, we we shouldn't add any more pressure to the, to the bee population. But I mean, we haven't experienced a massive shortage of things yet. You know, we we have been working around it. At the same time, I feel like the murder hornet story is just like one of many other stories that are similar to it. Like there's a looming ecological disaster. You know, th th there's a radiation from Fukushima is going to be going into the oceans. And like, and like, it's like, no one cares about that anymore. I mean, Fukushima is still irradiated, but no one cares anymore. You know, I feel like, or like when, um, people were talking about like various volcanoes that were erupting or going to erupt soon or like, like other, like, it seems like the news at this point, because the, the the legacy media is so shit, they rely on these constant st scare stories that nobody even remembers happened a year later. Now, now coronavirus is not going to be that. Th this will be a memorable one because it's so big. But most of these stories, like murder hornets, no one gives a shit. And it's not actually going to affect all that much, I don't think. And by the end of it, no one will even remember that it happened. So, fuck them. Let's move on. Yeah, the Amazon is on fire. Is it? No one's talking about it anymore. It's almost like it was just fucking like, like another news story. I, I'm not saying I'm not saying that there aren't real news stories. There are. I'm not saying that there aren't real problems to be solved. There are. But like, let's let's not pretend that this is this is the next end of the world thing. Even as we've survived the next fifty, the, the previous fifty end of the world things. It's just it's just stupid. Yeah. It's dumb. All right. We have some videos to watch, guys. Yeah, didn't more people die under Obama's, like under Obama with swine flu than, than did under coronavirus? It's just, it's, just, it's just all dumb, you know? It's all stupid. Okay. This is a commercial for bikes. I wanted to show this um, tweet last week. However, what happened was... Um... This person had locked their account for some reason. I don't know if like something came down on them. It's unrelated to this, but they're back. So I was thinking by a murder hornet. It hurt, but yeah, I mean, you're still here, Brick Weapon. Also, thanks for the two bucks, dude. Thank you. Let's watch this. Here we go. Speed up, she. Holy shit! Genkai ni idomi, kibin ni ugoke. Shiretsu ni, eibin ni. So sureba kokufuku deki. It's the boss, guys. Itzo da kara. It's a... It's a bike! It's just... It was a bike advertisement. It's, it's just a bike advertisement. What does any of that have to do with a bicycle? All right, guys. <laughs> this guy plays Sekiro on expert, dude. I gotta play Sekiro on Game Boomers. Actually, um, Naomi's been playing. Naomi's been playing uh, Bloodborne 
and she's been like resistant to the idea of playing it on stream. Would you guys want to see a Naomi Bloodborne rage stream? Okay. What's this video? Oh yeah. Okay, check this out. Check this out. This is Italian officials talking about the coronavirus. Check this out. Qualcuno vorrebbe preparare la festa di laurea. Mandiamo i carabinieri, ma li mandiamo con i lanciafiamme. The police with flamethrowers? Che domani di becco, domani! Non pensiate tra anni, domani! Sono il sindaco, sul mio territorio non si... You won't stroll in my town. Non vi posso impedire formalmente di uscire da casa. I can't formally ban you. Vi impedisco di passare sul suolo pubblico. What the fuck? Allora mi rivolgo a voi. Ma dove cazzo... Yes, okay, I'll talk to her about it. You must have an inf... So wait, wait, people who walk have inflamed prostates, apparently? Profus for 20 kronar, thank you. That's pretty rad for a bike advert. Yeah. You can't play ping pong. You can't? Go home, play video games. No one's fucking here, dude! Piss off, man! Jesus. We need their girlfriends at the club? The casket will be closed, apparently. I saw a fellow citizen jog up and down the street. La corsetta su e giù per la strada, accompagnato da un cane visibilmente. by a dog that was worn out. Lo fermato and said, "Look, this isn't a movie." Tu non sei Will Smith. You're not Will Smith, and I am legend. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Fuck this, dude. Man. I guess they're gonna, I guess they're gonna flamethrower pe people's houses for like if they go out. Jesus Christ, guys, what the fuck? All right, what's this here? Ohio bought a record 4,000, no, 437,507 gallons of liquor the week that the governor ordered bars and restaurants closed due to coronavirus. Yeah, I've noticed um, people are just day drinking constantly around here, man. Like, I'll, I'll go for a walk and people will have, like, their, their garbage out for the next day to be picked up. And unlike ever before... Their recycling bins are loaded to the fucking top, over the top, with empty booze bottles. And I'm like, what the fuck, guys? Everyone's just drinking all the time. Like, do, do, can people really not stand their lives that they have to drink constantly? Shit, dude. I, I, I never understood that. Like, even when I was at my worst, at my most depressed, at, like, the, the worst part of my life... I never felt the need to just, like, drown my sorrows in booze. Things were never so bad that, like, I, I, I needed to get drunk just to not be present in my own head. Like, the fuck? What? I don't, I don't understand drinking in general, I think. I do think I just don't understand drinking in general. But shit, dude. Yeah, I don't, um, I don't drink. I don't drink, I don't get stoned, I don't really do anything that's, like, mind-altering. I, I like my life the way that it is. Yeah. Anyway. On the afternoon of Sunday, March 15th, oh, this is old, uh, Ohio Governor Mark DeWine, of course it would be DeWine, announced that all bars and restaurants in the state would have to be closed by 9 p.m. And then apparently, uh, daily life goes on and getting through has required alcohol. And boy, did the Buckeye State require it. They bought $38.7 million worth of alcohol in, in one week. <laughs> Holy shit. Never been to a house party. I have been. I fucking... Dude, Odoroki, I've been to, like, multiple locations where everyone just drinks, and I'm just like, this is fucking terrible. What are you guys doing? You look like idiots. 
Cameron, thanks for the two bucks. Hey, Dev, sips to you. Sip, man. That last VTM, though. Yeah. I Okay, I've been right the entire goddamn campaign in VTM. No one wants to admit it. Never drink antisocially, maybe. Straight edge. Yeah, okay, Argus, I am I am as straight edge as I can be. Like the 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 closest that I consume to a mind altering substance is caffeine. That's it. Enjoying your Trudeau bucks? I haven't gotten any Adar. Thanks for the two dollars. No Trudeau bucks for me. I, I'm still working. <laughs> anyway. Um so they, they it's a sixty two percent in year over year increase. They bought a shit ton of booze. That's just liquor. Ohioans were also buying beer in record numbers. Let's see. What does, it, does it say? Top 10 sellers were Wood, Woodford Reserve, Maker's Mark, Jack Daniels, Jameson, Crown Royal, Hennessy, and pa Patron Silver. Damn, people are just getting drunk, aren't they? Drinking like that is pure weakness. Yeah, I think so too. Thanks, Harry. Thanks for the $2. Dev is the designated driver. Yeah, actually, yeah. Straight Edge runs through Naomi once every two hours. What do you mean runs through Naomi? In any case, let's keep going here. Elon Musk tweet wipes four wipes fourteen billion off Tesla's value. <laughs> I have a feeling that uh, I think part of the reason why Americans they they just love their booze is because they can't drink till twenty one, so it, it feels more forbidden. Take a look at the CCFR channel. They're taking the feds to court over the firearms ban. DM me in information on Discord madness. Thanks for the five dollars. DM me. I'll look at it. Okay. Anyway, Tesla boss Elon Musk wiped fourteen billion off the car maker's value after tweeting its share price was too high. <laughs> It also knocked $3 billion off Mr. Musk's own stake in Tesla as investors promptly bailed out of the company. Tesla stock price too high, IMO, he said in one of several tweets that included a vow to sell his positions. <laughs> in other tweets, he said his girlfriend was mad at him. One other simply read, okay, Rage Against the Dying Light of Consciousness. All right. So it, it's kind of funny. Like, e Elon Musk doesn't give a fuck. And he like, he ruined people. Like, people had, had stocks in... In Tesla's in, in in Tesla and and he's like yeah, it's worth too much and they just like lost a sh they lost like thousands of dollars tens of thousands of dollars and it's just like no oh, whatever <laughs> like he he doesn't seem to care about about like the the financial the corporate side of things he's like fuck it I'm I'm here to do actual work not just trade stocks and like maybe make money someday or like or like exploit people he, he doesn't seem to be that kind of guy you know Let's see what we got here. Um, from Alcade, there's 500 yen. Thank you. Here's a bit of my Trump bucks and Abe bucks I get because I'm a U.S. citizen living in Japan and I get both. Thanks very much, Alcade. Hey, um, if I ever like need somebody to to import some Japanese stuff for me, would you mind doing it? I'll pay you, obviously. But I don't know anybody who lives in Japan currently. I knew a few like back in like back in the day, like a few years ago, but not anymore. A lot of them have moved away. Um. I didn't even hurt him because he treated it like a joke. Yeah, exactly, Ben Z. Yeah, yeah, Zen Chan. The stock market. It's like, don't use the stock market. Use it to make money, but only short term. Like in like go in, go out. You know? Maybe. Even then. Th there's a lot of people like like for for example, my parents. My parents are actually a good example. Um they uh they have stocks. And I think they, they probably lost a shit ton of money during this this whole downturn. And I was just like, well, there's different things. That, like, maybe maybe put your money in something else. <laughs> but, I mean, it's their money. They can do whatever they want, you know. They, they don't got to listen to me. Anyway. In 2018, a tweet about Tesla's future in the New York stock market led, led to regulators fining the company $20 million. And Mr. and Mr. Musk agreeing to have all further posts on the platform pre-screened by lawyers. I guess he didn't fucking listen to that. <laughs> On Friday, the Wall Street Journal reported it had asked the billionaire if he was joking about the share price tweet and whether it had been vetted, receiving the reply, no. <laughs> Tesla's share price has surged this year, putting the electric car maker's value at close to $100 billion. 
a mark that would trigger a bonus payment of hundreds of millions of dollars. So I guess he lost a bunch of money. He doesn't even care. He doesn't even give a shit. We view these Musk comments as tongue-in-cheek, and it's Elon being Elon. It's certainly a headache for investors for him to venture into this area, as his tweeting remains a hot-button issue. And Wall Street clearly is frustrated. Shut the fuck up! Who cares, dude? <laughs> no. Shit posting comes before... Comes before your profit. Do, do you don't, we don't understand long-term investment? Um, I actually just don't trust the, tr the stock market. That's what it is. You know? I, I just don't trust it. I, I would not invest money in stocks, I don't think. At least not for, like, shit tons of money. Lost stock money isn't actually lost until you pull it out. I mean, sometimes, hobo, sometimes it's just gone. Like, for example, if you buy... Like, if you're an idiot who buys a stock while high, and then the company just goes bankrupt, it's like, well, there goes all your money. It's just fucking gone. You know? There's a lot of people that get fucked in the stock market constantly. Stocks are just corporate gambling. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Figured his anime shit posting would have lost those bucks, but no, this did. <laughs> Mustonks, dude. <laughs> Buy high, sell low. That's how you do it. <laughs> I don't know. I w if I had money, I probably would put stuff in stocks, but I would not put all of it in stocks. You know, I would put a lot of it in something that's a bit more stable than stocks. I definitely, especially right now, like with, with with the coronavirus depression. Actually, you know what? This might actually be the time to uh, to invest. Like, maybe not right now, but in a few months. So, for example, when like because people are are being really stupid and the economy actually crashes because it's it's going to happen at this point. I think. Um, Everything's going to be probably lower in, in in price. It might be the time to buy them then, you know? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Apparently his girlfriend's mad at him. Is Grim Aziz actually his... Hold on. Hold, hold the fuck on. Grim Aziz is, is mad at me. Is this actually his girlfriend? Elvin Technocracy? Is this Elon Musk's girlfriend? What? Is this real? I don't, I don't fucking know, dude. I don't fucking know anymore. You've been buying the shit out of oil. How's that working out? Yeah, exactly confused. I agree with that. Yes. Of course she is. Maybe. Oh, I, I lost the article. Hold on. My money. Um, I don't have any money. <laughs> I own Gene Wilder's old house. It cannot be torn down or lose any of its soul. But he bought Gene Wilder's house? I guess he did. 2013. Shit, dude. Elon has an elf fetish. They're married. Really? Okay. Okay, cool. No, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Let's, let's continue on here. What's this? Coronavirus. Influencers' glossy lifestyles lose their shine. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh no. It's hard to believe that in, even in lockdown, life on Instagram can look idyllic. These people are all just fake and false and disgusting. They're, they're as plastic as the, the, the products they try to shill on their, uh, on their channels or whatever it is. Last month, Manchester-born Jack Morris posted a, ph a photograph in his swimwear. Standing in an infinity pool against a pink sunset in Bali. Lauren and I are trying to stay inside, inside our villa, as much as possible, and comply with social distancing. It sucks, but if everyone is doing it, does their part, the quicker this will be over. Wait, the post caused... 
Wait, the post caused some of his 2.7 million followers to lash out, responding with comments like, things could be worse, mate. It's like, oh, your life looks so fucking terrible, dude. We're all social distancing. Look how bad it is. Jesus Christ. So, in any case, a lot of these people are no longer getting the um, the deals that they once get because they're like all travel. Yeah, they're all travel bloggers. My last trip was in February. I was due to go to Finland in March, Ethiopia in April, and the Maldives last week. I was probably spent over half the year out of the country. And guess what? Your YouTube revenue is now less than 100, 100 pounds, down from about 1,000 a month. A month. She also lost money on flights and trips and I've been canceled. Wait, you've been traveling around the world on a thousand pounds a month. Doesn't seem right. I feel like you probably need a bit more than a thousand pounds a month to like afford a place and also get food and also plan trips and also go on trips, hotels, flights. All right. Poor, poor you, you know? Poor you guys. Oh, we can't we can't just jet set around the world and look really cool on TikTok. Poor you. Jesus. Like, thanks to you guys, I'm still able to keep going. But my my income hasn't actually changed. My YouTube ad revenue is the exact same. It, it's identical to what to, to, to what it was beforehand. And I think it's because I'm not like a useless fucking travel vlogger. I actually talk about stuff. Like, I'm not against the idea of if I ever go on a trip, putting out some vlogs about it. It might be fun. But I wouldn't make it my channel. I'd make it something that's it's like a side bonus. I'd, put, I'd probably put it on dev kit. It would, it, like, I'd probably do something that's just, you know, easy and fun and interesting, but not what I'm living off of. Like, I, I assume you guys are here so that I can, um, I can talk to you about various, like, political issues or about, or about, like, you know, philosophy, or maybe, like, a current event, you know, maybe some news, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe my ideas on a certain topic, like, like yesterday's dump, where I talked about the, um, the whole situation with, with The Last of Us, you know, that's what you're here for, you're not here to, like, fund me flying around the world and acting like a retard, you know what I mean? You have no idea the level of degeneracy a lot of Westerners get up to in the developing world, oh, I know, I know, I, 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 I know what you're talking about. Yeah. You're an educational anti-boredom lifeline. I don't, I don't know if I'm educational, but I do my best. Supercut travel vlogs are the worst. Okay. I've seen, okay. Argus, I've seen some vlogs of like these, these just these LA party lifers, nobodies. All right. And they're very clearly trying to get a word out or like, like trying to get a sentence out and they cut every single sentence and they're in front of a camera. So you see these, these jump cuts like twice a second. And it's like, dude, l learn learn to fucking speak in front of a camera. I'm not even that good at it. And I can still do it better than these guys sometimes. You know what? I, uh, I, oh, I'm, I'm done with the coffee, I think. Yeah, the coffee's all done. Dr. Diddler, sorry. But yeah, like, influencer. I fucking hate this term, but now I know why it exists. It's for people, it's people, people like these people, all right? Because YouTubers, again... Here, here's me, me being an old man again. YouTubers and like people that that had big followings on the internet, um, they were they they didn't travel around and they talked about a topic. You know, they were like, okay, I'm going to talk to you about this bit of hardware, this game, this event, whatever it was. You know, like, like old YouTubers, that, that's how it was. You, that's what made YouTube amazing is that you could actually see into somebody else's life and see what they were going to present to you for a little bit. These people are literally like. I look good. I'm traveling. Give me money. I'm I'm just I'm I'm just like a YouTuber who 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 talks about hardware or who talks about video games or who talks about like current political events or something like that. Here here's my video of me walking around a town and going, "Oh, it's so cool." Give me money. There there is I think there's actually like a difference now between influencers and YouTubers. And influencers are fucking cancer. Like, fucking cancer, dude. <laughs> okay, boomer. Yeah, I guess that's me. <laughs> Old man yells at influencers. I take no one seriously who ironically uses the word influencer. Like, it sounds so shady, too, right? It sounds so like... Uh, like, I'm gonna influence my audience. Like, fuck off. You know? I don't view you guys as and a, a resource, you know? 
on on some level, like not 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 entirely, because I I still decide what I do with my, with my time. But on some level, I um I view this channel as, as like a, a collaborative effort, if you know what I mean. Like n- like you guys don't don't decide what I make, but I do view your opinions as being equal to mine. It's not like I'm on a pedestal here, you know. I don't, I don't like viewing myself like that at all. I am just very much a regular guy. There is nothing special about me. The difference between influencers and YouTubers is that influencers make more money. Maybe. I think it's also because influencers sell out more. I miss Naomi Wu. She's still around, man. She still makes stuff. From from people I know that have quite big channels, they all tell me the same thing. You don't want that many eyes on you. Um, Yes and no, Revenant. Like, for example, Sargon doesn't seem to have a problem with it. You know? He, he, I don't think, I don't think his, his large size has gotten to his head. You know what I mean? Remember when musicians had to be able to play instead of looking good? Yeah. Yeah. Same, same kind of thing, I guess, eh? <laughs> I'm a regular guy who needs a pedestal due to his height. Yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. Let's keep going here. Why you need to stop baking bread. Sure, sure, Karen. Her, she, her name's actually Karen. Look at this woman. Oh. I guess she abandoned ship. Okay. Bill Gates is the real influencer. Ha ha ha. Thanks, Okay, Thank you very much. I was walking down the baking aisle to see if the organic flour was on sale. Organic flour is expensive and I am poor, so I always try to buy it when it goes on sale. There was no sale and no flour. The shelves were bare. My eyes traveled up to the top shelf, the shelf with the leavening ingredients, also bare. How could this be? When I got home, I logged onto my laptop and started reading articles in the pandemic. I had stopped reading most pandemic-related articles weeks ago because they were upsetting me too much. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't concentrate. I needed to distance myself. But I knew that the pandemic had something to do with the bare shelves in the baking aisle, so I exposed myself to the turmoil once more. Amori for five dollars. Thanks very much. Influencers, because calling them entertainers is too generous. You know what it is? Um, influencer implies that 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 they're there only to sell a product, only to sell a product. They're there to influence their audience to buy stuff, like th- just through sponsorships. It's it's kind of disgusting. X one for five. An interesting idea, maybe to present some of the history of the places they visit, but that'd be too much effort for them. That's what I would do if I was ever traveling. I'd do that. Anyway. It seems that there's been a run on flour and yeast because people are bored, so they're baking bread to pass the time. Seriously? Baking bread is a way of life for me, not a hobby. Not something to do just to pass the time. I don't eat store-bought bread. I rarely eat prepared foods of any kind. If you visited my kitchen, you would find food but nothing to eat because I only stock ingredients. I do all of my own cooking and baking. On Saturday nights, I don't order pizza. I make it from scratch, including the crust. I also grow my own popcorn. That's not a topic for another day. Okay, uh, f- 50 from Badger. Thanks again, dude. Five nine kings unite. May we always be five ten and a half on Tinder. I'm five seven, dude. <laughs> you see, I am I am one of those people. You know the ones. You offer them a plate of food and they look at suspiciously saying, is that organic? I want to know what is in my food, so I make it myself. By the way, croutons made from my homemade bread. Breading for five chicken. Breading for fried chicken made from my homemade bread. Stuffing for the Thanksgiving turkey made from my homemade bread. So when you buy up all the flour and leavening ingredients for the sake of pretty photos on your Instagram feed, you are literally taking food from my mouth and the mouths of other families who also do their own baking so they can provide healthy food for their families. Here's the problem. It's economics 101, supply and demand. Before the pandemic, very few people did scratch baking, so the grocery stores carried only limited supplies of flour and leavening. Both go bad, so they don't want it hanging around the shelves for too long. Hence the limited quantities. That was okay. There was always enough for those of us who needed it. But there is not enough now that we are competing with a bunch of deladante de banker bakers who care nothing for anyone but themselves. Yes, I know that sounds harsh, but I'm willing to bet that not a single one of them stopped to think as they grabbed the last flour and yeast that they were robbing other people's children of their daily bread. Nope. I'm certain all they cared about was how impressed everyone was going to be with their picture ber- with their picture perfect loaves of bread. Here's an idea. If you're bored and want to and want to learn new skills, why don't you learn how to garden and impress everyone with your tomatoes? 
How about learning how to sew to make masks for hospitals and first responders? I know. Learn to crochet so you can make those cute market bags when you go to the farmer's market. But please, please, I'm begging you, stop baking bread. This this person sounds so ridiculous. Are the are the comments gonna load up or? Yeah, the 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 the, the actual article's been deleted. Yeah. yeah. She's a master gardener and a member of the Herb Society of America. She manages two public gardens in New Jersey. Damn, dude. She, you should have prepped in advance, Karen. Oh wait. <laughs> What's this about being poor? Organic flour, this is that entitlement. Oh yeah, Jake, exactly, exactly. So like, for example here, um, she says, I'm willing to bet that not a single one of them stopped to think as they grabbed the last flour and yeast that they were robbing other people's children of their daily... Robbing. It's not robbing if you pay for it. It's not robbing if you fucking pay for it. <laughs> Oh, that is expensive. She isn't poor. Yeah, I know. Ke I know, Keevan. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, so th this person is just literally complaining that other people are getting in on what she viewed as a safe space. It's like, how dare you come into my community and shit it up? As if SJWs haven't been doing that to everyone for the past 10 years. Okay. Michigan pilot gives a literal FU to governor over coronavirus lockdown. So, started flying near Grand Rapids. And just flew in a big ol' F you with a giant penis at the end. F you. <laughs> Ian, for 10 bucks, thank you. Those who, the one who gives into their fear loses. I see. I don't quite get it, but thank you very much. Actually, I, I do get it. I don't, I don't know what, it, what it's in reference to, but again, thank you. So, the, this frustrated Michigan pilot gives a literal flying you know what about his governor's lockdown order. <laughs> Ed Frederick, 45, spent about an hour charting a path over Grand Rapids that spelled out this message for Governor Gretchen Whitmer. F you, with an arrow pointing directly over the governor's mansion. Oh, I thought this was like a uh, a penis, like a penis head, but it's an arrow pointing at Governor. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Frederick said he was inspired to hop in a propeller plane Friday morning after Whitmer announced an extension of the state's emergency lockdown order through May 28th. It's a power trip, Frederick told the Post. The government, no matter Democrats or Republicans, always seem like they're trying to do something just to prove they're doing something without weighing the ramifications. Frederick, who lives just outside Grand Rapids, said he owns a small business with his sister and explained that he believed a lockdown was unnecessary for the entire state, considering the largest concentration of cases were in the southeast region around Detroit. This has been an issue for a lot of people in the rural counties. There are 82 counties, but only four need to be locked down. And this is exactly how it is. These people will rule from the cities and don't understand that the entire the, the entirety of the area they're ruling is not a fucking city. Yeah. Look at this. We have an open carry, but just because it's legal doesn't mean you should do it. It's sort of like the virus. Like, shut the fuck up, dude. I don't need the government to wipe my tushy every two minutes. Let me know what the problems are going to be and let me know what the ramifications are. I'm responsible for myself. Exactly. That's how it should be. I've met people in real life. And I don't, I don't want to reveal uh, who they are because they've requested that I don't reveal who they are in the show. But I've met people in real life who have directly told me that safety is more important than freedom. And that I sound like a Republican and a Trump supporter because I believe freedom is more important than safety. And I'm like, dude, this this is what the Democrats were saying in the 90s. I haven't changed. I'm still center left. I just didn't go fucking insane. Like, Christ, man. Shit. The problem with that is that you can't you can't really be safe, not long term. First of all, everyone dies. Eventually, safety will fail because you will die. Secondly, you can do everything right, and and you still you, you can you can still get cancer and be dead in six months. And there's nothing you can do to change that. You know, sometimes shit just happens. If safety is safety is an important value, like things should be relatively safe. But if safety is the most important value then you end up restricting everyone's civil liberties. 
everyone's freedoms get restricted in the name of safety. You know? It's like, here, at the end of Mother 3, spoilers for the end of Mother 3, um, Pokey gets put in the absolutely safe capsule. And it's a, a ball designed to keep whatever's inside of it completely safe. It's indestructible. And the things that are inside of it don't age. And they can't hurt themselves. And also, it can't be opened because the outside world's unsafe. So he just exists in there for all eternity. Like, talk about a hellish existence, dude. Holy shit. Freedom's definitely more important than safety. So this is Gigi Love. And I, I read an article from her last week on the show about how she uh, she cheated on her boyfriend because her, her boyfriend put her on a pedestal. And she would have never cheated unless he did that. You know, bullshit like that. The world still hates a woman who cheats. What I learned from the comment section of my last article. Yeah, the world still does hate a woman who cheats. Because people who cheat, not just women, people who cheat are fucking disgusting. Also, this is there's no way this is her. Wait. To keep reading this story, to create a free account. No, fuck you, dude. It was it was open like it was open last time I looked at this. Hold on a minute. Hold, hold on a minute. Give me a moment. Oh, there's some noise outside. Hold on, I'm gonna close the door too. All right, I'm back. Sorry. Yeah, there's 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 no actual archive for this article. Um, and I don't want to fucking sign into Medium. Medium sucks ass. Like here, we can read, read the first paragraph. My best friend cried on my lap when she discovered the hidden text from her boyfriend. She was not the only woman in his life. It was all there in the fine print for her to read. He cheated, and he was still cheating, and now it was all out in the open. Oh no, cheating people are cheating people are fucking disgusting. All right. They're just hundred percent disgusting. Okay, and this this frames it. This this headline frames it like she thinks it's ridiculous that she's hated because she cheated. It's like no, oh no, I'm getting hate. Maybe it's deserved. You f- oh my god. People need to balance safety and freedom. Too much safety, you become North Korea. Too much freedom, you become South Sudan. Too much of either means you fail to reap the benefits of both. Yep, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Delete the cookies. Dev's hacking into the website. I don't care that much, honestly. It's probably just going to be her more, more, more apologia. Use the inspector, Boomer. F12. Open it and... I could open it in incognito. Okay, hold on. Uh, private window. Will this work? Yeah! I didn't Boomer it. Oh yeah. Also, just just real quick, the um, what was going on is the, the person that lives in 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 the bottom half of this house, um, <laughs> he's outside right now doing a bunch of weird shit, and he was making noise like he's he he's like full on redneck guys, and I, and I don't mean that like I know how there's a lot of, there's like a lot of redneck people who people who are like derogatively called rednecks or like in the UK gammons or whatever and they don't deserve it because even though they're from that subculture they're still like good people this person is not a good person all right um like he he has come up and threatened us when we've had renovators doing work up here because it's too loud and it's like dude we can't we can't not do this like it's not even us but no he, he's he's honestly just like a piece of shit but um he's also He's also, like, in the past five years that we've known him, 
he's been like catfished constantly, like constantly catfished. Um, and right now he's outside with, looks like a, a woman he imported from India. <laughs> I don't want to judge the relationship. You know, they, they can do whatever they like, fine, whatever. But like, it really seems like she's using him for a green card. And I'm like, oh God, okay, dude. If if you're if you're that desperate to find somebody, you you go right the fuck ahead. Anyway, um, here we are. I missed some super chats. Okay, I'll scroll back up. Sorry, 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 sorry. Let's see. Um, that confused for ten. Safety is a typical traditional conservative ideology from the typical core concepts. Those who want safety or freedom are never liberal, nor nor will ever be. All right, thank you very much. Meet the galaxy for five. Stop reaching into my wallet and taking my money, Dev. I'm going to starve. No, meet the galaxy. Don't do it. Five for Happy Connect. Thank you. I joined the Royal Canadian Air Force to help protect our country's freedoms. I had to give up many of my own freedoms in order to do this. That was your choice, though. You know, you you chose to do that. And I just have a feeling that people in our country don't don't really respect that nowadays. But thank you very much, though. Um, Odoroki for $10. People need to balance safety and freedom. I already read that. Yes, thank you very much. And I agree. I agree with you there. Yeah. Um. Uh oh. Shut up. Um. Ch check Discord DMs now. Super chat didn't work. Says Schnitzel. Uh, I'll check it after, man. I don't. I don't want to accidentally pull up my Discord on on screen here. Okay. So anyway, he's also watching your stream. Who knows? Yeah, Terra Nigma. That's not you. <laughs> it's not you, dude. All right. Meet the galaxy, 10 bucks. No, you either have freedom or you don't. Because I'm going to grant you freedom when you feel like it. No, you bitch. Who knows not your God-given rights are there. See, the uh, Sargon's concept conceptualization of the problem is correct. If religion is out of the picture, a la the Enlightenment, where do freedoms come from? Because if, if they come from the state, that's, that's terrible, you know? Do they just come from the fact that we're all humans and there's something inherent about being human? Maybe, you know? I DM'd you on Discord where my fear quote came from. I'll check it out after, Ian. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for all the for all the support today, guys. Hopefully with enough money, I can move out of this goddamn hellhole. Thank you very much, guys. It's, it's been quite incredible. Let's actually read this, though. Okay. Yeah, he cheated. He was still cheating. And it was all in the open. <sighs> yeah, Terra Enigma. Um, at the start, she shared her very black and white opinions. She was ending it. She was over him. He was scum. But gradually, she waded into the gray. She remembered what she loved about him. She listened when he said he was sorry. And before I knew it, they were back together and working through it. <laughs> okay, Terra Enigma, I know that you're not him. Because if he actually was watching this, he would come up and fucking kick on my door. Just for talking about it. He's that kind of guy. Anyway. Yep. Yep. See, before I knew it, they were back together and working through it. But see, that was her choice, right? She remembered the good times. She she thought that it could be fixed, and she decided to, to take, take the chance. It's not a chance that I would have taken, because I I took that chance when I was like twenty one or like twenty, whatever it was. I, I got cheated on. I, I, I forgave them. I, we, we worked through it. We eventually ended up breaking up like like five years later, but over a different thing. Um, and I w but I wouldn't take that chance now. You know, it's it is people's choice to take the chance. It doesn't mean that you should be given a chance. You know. If, if you aren't owed a second chance, if, you, if you're given one, it's by the grace of God and you should be fucking thankful for it. Okay. A version of this story has played out in my life time and time again. He cheats, she forgives. As a friend, it enrages me, but also as a friend, I am supportive. I know it's not black and white. I know that we're all living in the gray. I know I cannot fully define a relationship that I'm not a part of. These men were forgiven. They were forgiven by the woman they dated and the one they cheated with. I know many women who don't forgive guys, though, so I think you're just... Like, like you're, you're judging this on your own, on your own um, perceptions, which aren't the complete reality. Yep. When their girlfriends finally had enough, they just found someone else. There were no consequences. Uh, there's still consequences, dude. Like, like, first of all, the relationship's over, you know, those guys, they're, they're shitty guys. Like I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't say that a guy who did that was a good man. I, I looked down on that person, you know, like, fuck man. I recently published a piece for Fearless She Wrote about the time that I cheated. The comments I received prove the world is still not ready to forgive a woman who cheated. No, 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 no. The comments you received prove the world is not ready to forgive you. Because you just made excuse after excuse after excuse as to why you cheated. 
you took no responsibility, or rather, no, you took minimal responsibility, and you said that it was his fault for putting you on a pedestal, all right? The cheaters who have received forgiveness do not make excuses for themselves, generally. <laughs> At least they shouldn't, you know? Like, fucking hell, man. Number three says, hey, Devo, sorry I missed the past week of Game Boomers. I've been busy. I'm going to be an uncle. It's okay, man. Like, enjoy being an uncle, you know? And and thanks for at least trying to watch earlier, man. Thank you. Women who cheat should be decapitated. Deplore apology, you think so? Thanks for the two bucks. Here's a comment. Here's one of the many comments I received. Let's see how bad this comment is, guys. You sound like a very toxic person. I don't deal with people like you. Girls like you are the exact reason I've never trusted a woman. I hope your heart breaks and shatters. I hope that no one will, will love you genuinely. Um, this last bit is a bit much because people can always be forgiven or can always improve, but these are completely factual, legitimate, reasonable statements. She does sound like a very toxic person. I would not deal with a person like her either. You know, if I met her, I'd be like, ah, I don't want to hang out with you. I, I wouldn't trust you with anything, you know? I'm shaking as I type these sentences. I'm sure you fucking are. I'm not a celebrity. I'm not a public figure. Well, to be fair, if you put yourself in public, you're a public figure. Yes, I, I understand. My, my phone is telling me to stop streaming and, and get to recording based on my schedule, but I'm not done yet. Um, she's like, I'm not a public figure. I'm not a person who lives their life being criticized by the general public. Um, the moment that you write an article, you become at least on some level a public figure. It's just the truth. Yeah. Yeah. She cheated on her ex and blamed him it on him and is mad he moved on. Exactly. Yeah. But I wrote an article, I made a confession, I took the blame for the worst thing I did in my life. No, you didn't. I read the article. You barely, you, 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 you like took 10% of the blame, dude. And the internet trolls showed up in droves to rip me apart. Oh, I'm so sorry that you got bad comments on the internet when you talked about how you were a bad fucking person. Oh, God. I suspect you're here too, trolls. You will probably say that I'm playing the victim card. You'll probably call me a whore and a bitch and a slut. All because I kissed a guy who was not my boyfriend at a party. See, this is you. This is you minimizing what you did, and that's why you're getting this hate. Rather than having any sort of introspection, rather than recognizing that you fucked up, it's everyone else's problem for noticing your fuck up. Hmm? Middle-aged men are picking apart the actions that were committed by a college girl. Well, do I qualify as middle-aged yet? I think, I think I'm close to it. Isn't middle-aged like 40, you know? I'm not middle-aged yet. I'm not young anymore either. I'm not in my 20s. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not college age anymore. I'm like in the middle, I think. Um, actions that she took responsibility for. You didn't take, you didn't though. You didn't. That's the point is you didn't. Legally, she's a limited public figure if she writes a public article. Exactly. Exactly. For the purposes of response, she is classified as a public figure. Yes. The minute that you put a publication out, you're a public figure, at least on some level. Yeah. Everyone who criticizes me is just a troll. I'm I'm just a girl trying to get through this world. It's like, fuck off, dude. Get out of here. The world is not ready to forgive a woman who... She, this is all just like, oh my god, oh my god. The world's not ready for... She said this five times. The world's not ready to forgive a woman who cheats. Like... No, the world isn't ready for, to forgive you because you're a terrible person. And this is all just cope. This whole thing is just cope. You know what? I would not forgive a woman who cheats, and I would not forgive a man who cheats. All right? I would not, would not forgive any of these people. Like, check this out. I remember the day I had to look at my boyfriend in the face and admit to him what I did. He'd seen it, so he knew. My whole body felt like it was on fire. I apologized over and over, and I didn't make excuses. I didn't feel like I had a right to bring up any other issues that we had because I was the one who had committed the unforgivable sin. Yeah. And now that you're being judged on it later, after you, you no longer feel like you're on fire, you think it's unreasonable. It's like, well, I moved past it. How come you're still holding me to the problem? No, no, no. When actual penance means that when, you, when you've done something bad and someone brings it up later, you don't complain that you've moved past it and therefore it's, it's invalid. 
things do stay with you the rest of your life. You know, you make a mistake. It's a real mistake. When you do something wrong, it's wrong. And that's that. It doesn't matter how long ago you did it. And I hold myself to the same standard. I have made some fine mistakes in my time. And if somebody came up to me 20 years, like 20 years later and said, yo, what you did to me or what you did, it was bad. What you did to me, it hurt me. What you did to that person was not very good. I'd be like, yeah, you know, it, absolutely. Even though it was 20 years ago, I still can't, I, I can't fight it. Like, yes, I did that. You know, I might be a different person. I might not do it now. That doesn't change the fact that I did it. That's what being repentant means. It means that you accept responsibility continuously until the day that you die. Which sound, maybe that sounds extreme, but like, it doesn't mean that you have to like, like, like self-flagellate all the time, feel guilty for the rest of your life. I don't, I don't mean that. I mean like, when it comes up, you don't make excuses. When it comes up, which is not that often as time moves on, but when it comes up, you act like you're admitting it for the first time. You know? And just because the person that you did it to, they, they forgive you, that's nice. But generally, forgiveness is for them. Like, if you do something bad and your partner forgives you, the forgiveness is more for them to move past it than for you to move past it. You still have responsibility, you know? Like you, you still accept their forgiveness and you say, oh, no, no that's, that's nice of you. But, like, people say the best revenge is living. Shut up. Shut. Shut up. People say the best revenge is living well, and that's true, but the best responsibility is living well too. And part of living well means that when it comes up, you're still taking responsibility. It's about redemption. I, yeah, I think so too. Uh, thanks for the two bucks. NA. The blue G for five. I ended my relationship with my best friend because he cheated on his girl. Nothing worse than a cheater. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if I, if I'd end a relationship, but I would hold them to, I would hold them to fucking task. And if they, and if they like, if they like made a big old shitstorm about it, it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'd be like, well, fuck you then. See ya. All right, let's, let's continue. Amazon's upload paints Mike Pence as a villain while promoting communism. Oh boy. Thanks. Thanks, Amazon. I wonder if this amazing world could be created without communism, with communism. Probably not. They'd probably all be in the fucking fields. Amazon's new comedy series upload, it doesn't hide its anti-capitalist, pro-communist message and sadly kills what could have been a decent show. Let's face it. Up yeah, upload, by the way, is like, uh, it, you, you pay for a thing where if you die, your consciousness gets put into a computer program and you live there in the afterlife. That's that that is that's that's basically upload. That's that's the show. Um, the idea of the afterlife and preservation of the human conscious is nothing new, but it's an interesting concept. Okay, the, the new Amazon original series cheapens with, with pointless political hot takes. Okay, let's see. Look at this. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey, Kamala Harris, running for running in twenty twenty four. Oh boy, that's a ticket that'll win. Maybe Oprah. Oprah and somebody, but not Kamala. Holy fuck. All right. In any case, um, capitalism is evil. Communism is good. That's what Upload wants us to believe. Yeah, it's, it's fucking wild, dude. Okay. Let's, let's see what actually happens here. Yep. The rich people, who are all white old men, get access to the premium features of this new heaven, while the less fortunate get almost nothing. Yeah, okay. The heaven's ruined because of capitalism, guys. <laughs> so, customer service agents are referred to by the uploaded individuals as angels. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Mike Pence is the bad guy. This looks terrible, dude. <laughs> this looks terrible. <laughs> The white protagonist is just another filthy colonialist capitalist who screwed over his black friend to become even wealthier. Her daddy was right. The white man really is the devil. Wow. I kind of want to watch this now just to fucking see how dumb it is. Man spreading has crossed over to the realm of running and it's not okay. 
I have to go. <laughs> Shit. I have to actually get out of here in about an hour. And I wanted to record before I leave. So, uh... I might need to cut it short after this, uh, this article, guys. Sorry. Yeah, let's, talk, let's talk about how man-spreading and running are somehow connected. Taking up space in the world seems hardwired for men. But right now, it reeks of selfishness. Yeah, okay, dude. Something has been niggling... Okay. People have been cancelled for using words like snigger or niggling, even though they're completely legitimate words. And of course this person's just going to get away with it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, dude. Something has been niggling at me during my mandated daily exercise under lockdown. Mandated? I didn't know that you're being forced to do it. It's a realization that's, that's crept up on me. Day by day, the same realization that the person who first coined the term manspreading must have experienced it when, when it gradually hit them that, that men everywhere were taking up an inordinate amount of space on public transport. A global pandemic that's put on kibosh, no, a global pandemic has put the kibosh on using the tube and train for the majority of us should have really, should really have pressed pause on the phenomenon. After all, where is there to manspread now? Your kitchen table? Your own sofa? But then I started going running again, and I realized the practice has not stopped at all, merely migrated. For those of us not blessed with a rural setting... Oh, oh, a rural setting is blessing. It's a blessing now. I mean, how many of you people were, lived in a small town and wanted to, like, leave, get, get the fuck out, and, like, go and move to the big city and make it, you know? How many of you still look back on, on your days in your small town, your family, your old friends, with complete disdain? Sometimes deserved, but oftentimes not, just because you think you're better than them now. Fuck you, blessing with a... F fuck off. Okay, anyway. Outdoor exercise can feel like a minefield during quarantine. I can't embark on a 30-minute circular jog from my front door without crossing paths with at least 50 people. I lived in London's Zone 1, and this seemingly is my punishment for not getting the hell out of Dodge when all my contemporaries started moving to the burbs several years ago. <laughs> oh no, I live in a city. I go running and there's people around. Oh, this is manspreading. The men are, the men are spreading themselves across the parks now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Holy fuck. Um, Five dollars from Zerindu, thank you. I take up space because I'm a big boy. <laughs> I can't help my genetics. I'll keep in mind to spread my mass around more often. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Thank you. Ben Z for two. Whoever wrote this trash needs to never write ever. <laughs> I agree, dude. Thank you very much. Okay. It taints the activity with an unwanted wash of anxiety. What if I get it? What if I already have it and no unknowingly pass it on? Even before the... <laughs> oh no, my running experience is tainted because someone else is there. Fuck, dude. Even before the coronavirus outbreak, there was an unspoken code of conduct I instinctively followed when running especially somewhere with limited space like the canal path that forms part of my regular route. An innate considerateness took over, pausing to let people on bikes, pausing to let people on, pass on bikes, saying thank you to those who paused to let me pass, keeping to one side of the path. All these things came naturally. What's wrong with that, dude? It sounds okay. Since lockdown started, this code has simply intensified. I attempt to make myself physically smaller, squeezing into the very edge of the trail, Refraining from breathing as I refraining from breathing as I pass people. That's right. I literally stop breathing. Some part of my brain took the decision to hold my breath when others cross my path, and I do it not consciously but instinctively. Well, that sounds like your fucking problem then. Hmm. I'm not saying this for a pat on the back or to raise awareness of what a great person I am, although it would be nice to get some recognition for a change. Where's my bloody where's my bloody metal? Fuck off. It's more just an observation about natural behavior. I unconsciously adapted mind to fit a scenario in which social distance in which social distancing was required but difficult to observe. I wouldn't have even been aware of it had it not been for the for the discrepancy between my own response and that of others. And when I say others, I mean men. Yes, yes, I know. Hashtag not all men, but hashtag a considerable number of men. Imagine if if we all said here, hashtag a considerable number of women. They would fucking lose it, dude. They would lose their goddamn fucking minds. And definitely hashtag not women. Oh, oh, definitely not women. 
I've seen someone who just don't give a fuck. Because women are not like this this class of, of angels who can never do no wrong. Fuck it. Okay. Anyway, I'm just getting mad. All the female joggers I pass seem to be doing the same unthinking con- contortions as me. We have more practice, I suppose, at making ourselves small and non-threatening and unnoticeable. We have form when it comes to bending over backwards to make everyone else in the room feel comfortable, often at the expense of our own comfort. Okay. All right, dude. Sure. Sure. No one makes you do those things but yourself. Take take some responsibility for your own behaviors, dude. You clap for me now. Yeah, sure. That's like saying, look at me. I'm the captain. It's striking how many men do the opposite. They choose to plant themselves instead in the middle of the path. Arms and legs pumping, striding flat out. Well, yeah, because they're exercising, dude. They make no allowances, no exceptions, seemingly unaware that the person they're approaching is doing a a frantic parody of a a Viennese waltz, trying to adhere to the, under such circumstances, impossible to meter rule. It's no concern of theirs. They've picked their lane, they're going to stick to it, thanks very much. Wide-legged stances and unwavering trajectory, as if following invisible tram lines, send the clear message, this space is mine, I dominate. Better give me some room, love. All others must leap out of the way, grateful grateful for the small toehold they've been granted. You just sound insecure. Like, you just sound insecure. All I can think of is, oh god, exactly, C. Dranzer, yeah. Two dollars for Brick Muppet. Stop, stop! I am holding the conch. <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. Holy fuck. Like, you go out on a trail, you meet 50 people. That's a lot of people for a trail. But you're still not, like, jammed shoulder to shoulder with them. Just go, just go by and shut up. Like, who cares, man? Is she writing what the horrors Lund stand but need to blame people who aren't a threat? I think so. That confused. Like, there's a lot of bad things happening in Lundistan right now, but it's 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 not this. <laughs> Wait. Normally, this kind of behavior is amusing, bordering on preposterous, exasperating, sure, but more something to roll your eyes at and bitch about over a coffee later. But now it feels selfish. It feels scary. It feels dangerous. As they pass, limbs moving like pistons, chugging forcefully out through the mouth like an unstoppable steam engine. I think about how I would f- I would feel if I lived with someone vulnerable or was vulnerable myself. I think about the courage it would take to get outside and the fear I would experience every time I stepped outside my front door. Fear that I could t- catch the virus and take it home. And I think about the menace I would feel if a six-foot sprinter was bearing down on me, making no con- making no concessions to social distancing, no effort to slow down, his audible ch of, ex- of exhalation triggering a surge of panic as his spittle flew towards me through the air. <laughs> okay, this is like, you'd see this in a teen comedy, all right? Where someone is like slow motion running and like just sweating everywhere and splashing buckets of sweat and spitting. And the person would be like, oh no! And like slow motion holding up their arms as like a wave hits them. I'd see this in, 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 a, in a comedy and it would be a joke. But she actually thinks this. She needs the D because of the hard pistons. <laughs> ben Z. What, writer, your narcissism, ego, your narcissistic egomaniac is showing. Yeah, I agree, dude. <laughs> Fan fiction rating 6 out of 10. <laughs> and I say again, hashtag not all men. But if women's contouring to fit is unconscious, so too is men's ballooning to fill as much physical space as possible. Well, I'm ballooning right now. Ha 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 ha. Maybe all you need to do to change the dynamic is to become aware of how you're wired. Maybe all you need to do is acknowledge and feel, fight that urge to expand. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I gotta keep eating. <laughs> so if you're a man reading this, just think before you spread and make sure it's hashtag not you. How about hashtag fuck you, lady? <laughs> She's mad that these pistons aren't man spreading on her at night. <laughs> She's probably three feet wide. People have a hard time getting out of her way. Let's see. Okay. Helen Coffee. Let's see her Twitter. Oh, shut up. I don't want to fucking tweet it. Here it is. That's her. She's a chubby face. She could be like like slightly chubby, but probably not that chubby. Let's go to media. She looks like a wine ant, you know? All of her all of her siblings and all of her friends have kids, and she's just like doting on them and lonely and drinking wine. 
That's what she looks like. Yeah, dude. Oh. Of course that would be her boyfriend. <laughs> of course that would be her boyfriend, dude. Fuck me. Apollo536, thank you very much. If I ever needed more motivation to get out and move to lose weight, this is doing it for me as much as for my own health. It doesn't look too bad. Right. Yeah. Just drink that wine, you know? Drink mommy's medicine, it'll make you feel all better. Holy shit, dude. Wow. Anyway. I cannot finish. I have to record something and then go out at one o'clock. That's in forty minutes, so I gotta go. As always. Follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash gameboomers. Tonight, I'm playing Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Tomorrow night, I'm playing Near Automata. And on Tuesday night, I'm playing the Final Fantasy VII Remake again. So drop by. It's in about seven, uh, it's about seven hours from now. Maybe, maybe, maybe six hours from now, about that. Drop by, please, if you, if you don't mind. Um, if you want to support the channel financially... Super chats have been great. Thank you very much, guys. It's been it's been amazing how much money you've given me. I really do appreciate it. However, a recurring source allows the bots to put you into a fi into the five dollar club. Subscribe to our Patreon, YouTube, Twitch. Hundred dollars directly. You DM me. You, you give hundred dollars uh, direct through PayPal. I will give. I'll get you into the five dollar club for free. All right. So that is the scoop for today. Five dollars right at the end from Satanic Potato. Pandemic causes tyrants to restrict everyone's freedoms. Well, I'm most affected. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, dude. Pretty much. Anyway. Join me tonight for Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I dress up as a really fat Luke Skywalker during this playthrough, so you guys will want to see it. Click on that Twitch link in about seven hours, maybe six hours, you'll be you'll be able to see it. Um, and I, I stream there every night. Also, check out that dev kit channel, guys, that I showed off earlier. I'm going to probably post some more videos on that, on that soon. I have actually, um, two videos that I'm going to, that I already have ready to go. One of them is an unboxing of a GameCube HDMI adapter. The other one is a bonfire where I burned a bunch of old stuff that I used on the channel at one point. So I think, I, I think that's what it is. Anyway, those will be up on, on the dev kit in the next few days. So thank you very much, everyone. Um... I think that's it. Yeah. I'll see you tonight. Thanks very much. Thanks for all the support. I love you. Have a good day. Make sure to talk to your moms. <laughs>